For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy, to ghostly phenomena in our own backyard, we will dive into our psychic abilities and explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. Hey! Woo! Yeah! Welcome, welcome Ow! to 30 Odd Minutes. It's great to have you here. Welcome from the mothership. We're hovering through time and space. And tonight we're going to get psychic. Very excited about this. Uh, something I've been, I've been thinking a lot about this all week. I've been chewing on it, chewing it over. You know, not sure how I feel, and I'm hoping... I will learn something in the next half hour. All of you as well. I want to say hello to Sarah and Matt, holding it down in the control center. How are you guys? Awesome. We're awesome, Jeff. I'm excited. I know. I know. This I is know. very exciting. And, and the, if you're in the chat room, 30oddminutes.com, be sure to say hello. You can pass questions up to us, and we'll try to communicate them to our guests if we can. And, uh, and of course, want to remind you, check out our website, because we have all the past episodes for free. Up there, 30oddminutes.com. Links to all of our guests, all the great stuff that they're doing. You can check us out on YouTube for free, on iTunes for free. You can subscribe. We're everywhere because uh, we want to just spread the love, spread the oddness, and, uh, <laughs> and that's what we do. And uh, we're not just online. We're also on all kinds of stations. Sarah, who picked us up? We want to give a shout-out to, well, actually, they're kind of a long-time station, but I don't think I've ever given them a shout-out. It's Scan TV in Seattle, King County, Washington. They've okay. been there since our first summer airing. Thank you, Seattle. Yes. We appreciate you guys broadcasting yes, the odd. And we got tweets and Facebooks and emails, too. What's up? Yes, we do. I got an email this time. It's cute. It says, hey, oddballs, I love the show, the energy, and it's just the right length, not too long, not too short. Aww. Everyone in the chat room is fun to talk to, and there's always so many fun stories and experiences. Oh, and I want Sarah's boots. Everyone Aww. wants my boots. Um, question, have you ever thought about doing a live show with your fans right there in the oddball pit with everyone else? Wow. <laughs> Thought about maybe, yeah, we talked about it, and you know, stay tuned for what is Odd Fest because oh, yeah. that will be something to come. We are definitely going to do Odd We're going to do Odd Fest. We've been talking about it for a while, it is going to happen. It is definitely going to happen. And we'll let you know what that is. And we'll have we beer. Come. Yeah, we should. That's all you need to know. That's yeah. right. That there will we be are working there. on that. And <laughs> as far as live shows, that's a great question. We've done 30 odd minutes live before at a conference, and we've got one coming up uh, probably two shows from now. It's going to be at Phenomenology in Gettysburg. We'll be doing 30 odd minutes live. Uh, we're going to be interviewing some of the speakers there as, as a panel. It's going to be awesome, so much fun. And of course, you'll get to see it as an episode later on if you're not there in person. So that's always one way to go. Okay, so last week I was in Central Florida. And I got to visit this place. Look at this, this haunted mansion. Here's a picture of it any moment now. There it is. Does that not look creepy? I mean, it just looks haunted, right? And then as I went a little further, I took a picture of this too. The Spectracom. Uh, you get to speak with the nearly departed, which is just uh, downright clever. Yes, I was indeed at the Haunted Mansion in Disney World. It was a lot of fun. And I got to talk to one of the staff members because I heard rumors that it was truly haunted, not just uh, fun and games haunted. And, uh, and one, of the, um, uh, one of the managers there was telling me that they actually believe the Pirates of the Caribbean ride is haunted because someone did die there during the construction. And uh, each morning they say, good morning, George, and they say, good night, George. And if they don't, something seems to go wrong, so he's become kind of a scapegoat. But at the Haunted Mansion, uh, they, you know, they've got cameras everywhere for your safety, and they're checking you out. But they say they'll see people come in with little baggies of powder and they'll be sprinkling the powder during the ride. Those are loved ones' ashes. There have been many an ash scash, uh, scattered inside Disney's Haunted Mansion, and uh, maybe that helps lead to its, its truly haunted reputation today. So that was cool, and because I got to have that conversation, uh, my accountant tells me that that trip could be a write-off. So um, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that Disney World. I appreciate it. Uh, okay, so tonight, speaking of speaking with the nearly departed and, and all that other stuff, we are getting psychic. Now, I've been on the fence about this. I understand about intuition, gut feelings, all of that stuff, but psychic, can we really communicate with the other side, with departed loved ones? Uh, we've covered this topic on, of ghosts and spirits in many 30-odd minute missions, and we've explored the gear that might help us facilitate that contact with those who have passed on. 
But what about the living people who can make that contact without the gear? The mediums who communicate directly with spirits? Tonight's guest says he can do just that. He's the author of numerous books, including Born Knowing, Power of Soul, as well as his latest book, The Spirit Whisperer, Chronicles of a Medium. He hosts his own radio program, he's published his own tarot deck, and he offers lectures and psychic readings all over the world. You've seen him on a &E, the History Channel, and numerous other networks, and tonight he's all yours. Please welcome live from New England, John Holland. Woo! Hey. hey, guys. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us this evening. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Now, real quick, before we get to you, I just want to tell a story. I, I've had friends who are psychics, famous ones that, that I'm sure you know and we've seen on television, uh, and, and I've been around it a lot. Now, when my wife was pregnant, this was yes. very interesting, five different psychics all said to me, independently, uh, you're going to have a boy. All five. And I said, wow. I mean, because we actually didn't find out. We decided we weren't going to find out the sex. And when all five said that, I said, all right, well, it's going to be a boy. And then... Alas, we had a girl. That's how it goes. I'm not saying this disproves or proves anything, but I've always had kind of, you know, mixed feelings about the psychic thing. Now, our own Sarah, Sarah, please do tell, you've had, you've had some readings that kind of shook you up a little bit. Tell us about that. Yeah, I absolutely have. And I mean, as you know, I, I sought out John as a guest. I, I, I very much respect his work and believe in it. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have had a couple of things. I've had someone who could read my um, past animal, my pet. Mm -hmm. um, sh she was able to tell me his favorite spot, things that she never knew about him. Um, and I wasn't looking for a reading at all. Just She was like, just so you know, your your dog is chilling by your side. Um, That's and, cool. Yeah, it was super it, cool. That is cool because I know John is a pet lover and also... Uh, you know, there's a whole chapter of that in his book. We'll get Absolutely. to that. We'll get to that. But go on, please, Sarah. Tell yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, about so that was cool because I wasn't expecting it. It wasn't what I was looking for. It just she just told me. She's like, I don't know if you want it or not, but there you go. This is what he's showing me. Um, but I have sought out a reading from someone, and of course, I, I'm very skeptical. Went into it very skeptical. But what I was impressed with was just how assured she was in some of the things she was telling me. Now, some of them I couldn't verify. I talked a lot about past lives, which I found fascinating. But there were things like. You know, she would tell me the nature of the relationship I had with my mother currently. Right. And it, it was just like, you're the caretaker with your mother. And you've felt this way since you were a kid. You've always felt like you needed to protect your mother. I mean, that's very clear cut and right on. Was yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. And she was able to link it to an event that had happened in a past life of mine. And there was just something about it that really resonated with me as to why the dynamic exists between me and my mother and why that reason might be. Because as far back as a kid as I could remember, it, it rang true for me. And so... There was much more to it than that, yeah, and a sure. lot was really personal, but I found there was just too much that was beyond coincidence, and I, I don't believe in coincidence anyway, but it was very uh, profound for me. It really moved me. Excellent. Um, yeah. Matt, Matt, how do you feel about psychics? I mean, I, where, where do you stand on, you know, I know you've done a lot of paranormal investigations, but where do you stand on psychics? Well, as a young child, uh, I grew up with psychics, uh, basically in my family and uh, visiting and stuff like that. And uh, I encountered people that I will call uh, very intuitive or very um, in tune with some other thing that most people are not in tune with. Uh, as a scientist, I can say that there are uh, people with abilities uh, in their mind that they can uh, perform more than the average human right? and, and stuff like that mentally. I don't see why they, that, that ability can't be used to you know, divine other things out of the ethers that we live in. Okay. I'm saying it's not, it's not an impossibility as a scientist. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Well, awesome. Well, you know, we should ask Talk our guest. Talk to the real guy, we should, yeah. <laughs> we should ask John Holland. John, what does it mean to be a psychic medium? Help us out. Well, there, there is a difference, guys. I don't know if you realize that. Every medium is psychic, but not every psychic is a medium. Yes. A psychic is someone who can pick up the energy around you. They're getting it from your space, your past, your present, your potential future. A medium is someone who gets the information directly from the other side. Every medium is psychic, but not every psychic is a medium. So psychics perceive and mediums receive. Okay. Um now, your own ability, this is very interesting to me. I understand uh, in 1993 you, you went through a car accident, and this was a, this was a real defining moment in your, your psychic development. Tell us what happened sure. in the accident and thereafter. Well, I was very intuitive, um, psychic as a child. I knew things I couldn't possibly have known. I was called weird, born in an Irish, Italian, Catholic family. Right. And, um, you know, so, well, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I was the different one in the family out of the five kids. I put, now, you know, think about it. Back in the early 60s, you know, 
you don't talk about stuff like that. Not you'd never have a show like yours back then, you know. So right. um, I wouldn't talk. They wouldn't talk about it, and so I hid the ability. The automobile accident awoke the abilities that I pushed away, and I couldn't ignore it. There was like a, a rush of energy, and I was bartending in, in Los Angeles, and people would walk up to the bar, and I would just blurt out things about their lives. And I always tell my students, don't do what I did. Don't. Um, don't just give information like that. Always, you know, go into it because your life, uh, their lives are in your hands. So that's what happened. And one thing led to another, one synchronistic event. I got to study in England with the spiritualist over there. And um, 20 years later, I'm still doing it. Hey, now, tell us about England. I understand, you know, you went through some stuff that you would consider beyond psychic, a little bit paranormal uh, over there. And, and, and you know, um, I'd rather have you describe it. What is a transfiguration medium? Oh, very, very good. You actually read the book, Jeff. Very good. Very good. I um, study a little. There's all kinds of mediums, guys. There's mental medium where, right. you know, where we're picking up the thoughts from your loved ones. There is physical mediumship back in the day where the spirits used to just form right in front of the medium, which, you know, I, I'd love to see something like that. But you'd have to sit for years for development. There's spirit artists. And there's also transfiguration mediums. And I was at an event and I was a student, you know, over there. And someone said, do you want to go see a transfiguration medium? I said, are you kidding me? A real one. So we go into this church, and you know it's not a uh, it's not a theater. It's just a church, wooden stage, um, you know. And a guy walks out, and uh, Jeff, do you remember what Uncle Festa used to look like in the um, Adams family? Yes, he looked like my real. Yeah. Uncle. Okay. So this guy walks out. You know what I mean? He, he was totally bald. He was short. He was round, and he just explained what transfiguration medium was, and what transfiguration medium is is a medium goes into trance, and the ectoplasm, you start seeing a mist, not dry ice. It's something that comes from the medium's body. And, it, you know, it, it, it started to form um, in front of the, the medium's face. And the spirit people, you'll see the faces push through. I mean, it was, it was freaky. It was, I had a, I closed my eyes and I looked to say, okay, is this real? Or is this just my clairvoyant eye opening? And so the people that were with me, I said, what are you seeing? And they said, a Chinese man. I said, well, what are you seeing? Because I wanted to make sure that everyone wasn't seeing what they wanted to see. Sure. So you saw this bald-headed English white guy. The eyes went slanted. The, the, you could see a mustache. You can see the long beard. So that was his guide. But remember, you could see the medium's face, the ectoplasm, and the, fa and the, and the face is pushing through like the, uh, the mist. So it was, it was very freaky. And then... Um, you see faces coming through, mothers, fathers, and children. And I'm still, you know, still, like they say in England, gobsmacked when I see this. So he looks over and he calls over in my direction. He says, John, it's me, Michael. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, 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 it can't be. And my friends are like poking me in the side. They're like, John, say something. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let him say one more thing and then I'll know. And I do. Uh, I'm, right there, I was acting like a lot of people in my audience say that one more thing. And he says, John, it's Michael. And I, I stood up and I said, okay. I said, I'm John. He said, John, it's me, Michael. Please tell my family I didn't mean to do it. Now, Jeff and, and, the, and everyone else there, um, little did anybody know, two weeks before then, my friend Cindy's um, brother died of a heroin overdose. So here's this guy. I'm in England. Two weeks. A face pushes through that looked like this kid who I knew. Not exactly, but um, looked like him. Called out my name and said, please tell my family I didn't mean to do it. I mean, just totally blew me. I mean, uh, you know, he looked right in my section. The name Michael and his family always wondered, was this a suicide or did he do this? Was this an accident? So, yeah, transfiguration medium. It's very, very rare, but it is out there. So as you start to become a, a psychic, uh, doing this every day, uh, you said you were raised Irish Catholic. Did you have any, any, any issues with that, any struggles with your, your upbringing and, and uh, what you went through, you know, uh, religiously? Um, not really religiously. Um, we, were, we weren't really practicing Catholics. I mean, we did go to church. We made our First Holy Communion. But um, um, I was raised in an alcoholic family, okay? Yeah. So my dad was always, you know, you know, we never knew. I really believe everyone, too, who's listening in to you, Jeff, and the people there. I think being brought up in an alcoholic family, I had to be psychic. I, it made me extra sensitive. What's going to happen tonight? What's going to happen tomorrow? So being an alcoholic family kind of... Uh, awoke the abilities or, or use the abilities uh, even more. Or forced you to. Forced me them. to, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. Absolutely no, forced. I, I, understand. I, I needed that's to volatile, know what was going to happen that night. Yeah, that's a volatile environment to, to be in. Sure. And having a little foresight is part of survival. Right. 
But no, I mean, um, I did have a little help. My grandmother, uh, this, this ability goes from my grandmother's, my grandmother on the Italian side. And I went to parochial school and um, I never brought it up and, you know, to the nuns and said, you know, you, you know, your mother's behind you. So <laughs> the, the religious, uh, the religious part didn't really come into it. So, okay. Yeah, I was curious. Okay, uh, John, we do have a question for you from our chat room. Sarah, please. We do. Sure. We're getting flooded with John fans, actually. It's great. Um, but we do have a kind of a couple questions from Breeze. Um, the obvious question everyone always wants to know, is this something we're all able to practice and become psychic, or is it something, you know, that we are born with? Um, okay, Sarah. Yep. She felt like at one time she remembers being having some psychic abilities as a child, and then they left her. She wants to know: Can she get them back? Was sure. was what she experienced true? Yeah. Sure, absolutely. We're all born psychic, and everybody has a soul. You know, if you're listening, you're alive. You have a soul, um, even on the other side. Um, remember, you are a soul that comes with a body, not a body that comes with a soul. And as a soul, you have soul senses. And every kid, Jeff, how old's your kid? Uh, she's five. Okay, she's five, all right? Um, so she's very intuitive right now, okay? The, and pretty soon she's going to start school, mm -hmm. all right? The creativity is going to take a back seat. The analytical side of the brain is going to come in, uh, books, teachers, and we kind of push the abilities um, away. I mean, they are still there. So you are born this way, and for, for the person who just asked that question, yes, just keep practicing. Meditation will help you. Learn about the energy centers. And it's, they're not gone. We are all psychic. Many of us know um, when they don't, we don't like someone. Many of us hear people's names, uh, your name being called when nobody's there. So it's not gone. It's just la lying dormant. And you need to clear the channel or the equipment like you guys use, like you said, yeah. to open up your abilities. So tell me this. And, and I, I believe in intuition. Absolutely. You meet someone, all they right. say is hello, and, and a chill runs down your spine. This person's bad. I yes. want to get away. Or the opposite. You know, they just say hi, and you say, wow, I... I feel like I'm drawn to this person. We should be friends, something more, whatever. Yep. And and is that the same thing? Or is intuition and, and psychic sense, are we talking yeah, about Yeah, intuition. And I look at it this way. Some people say intuition and psychic ability is the same. Then in one of my books, I talk about this. You know when you get that intuitive thought, Jeff, let me go, uh, let me call someone, or maybe I shouldn't go down this road, I'll drive this road. That's, that's, an, intuitive, that's an intuitive hit. That's an intuitive thought that comes once in a while. All psychic ability means of the soul, okay? It's from the Greek psychos. It just means take an intuition and make it work for you. Um, instead of having that intuitive thought come every once in a while, you can actually, um, I, that, this is just my opinion in my way, you can actually make that intuition work for you. Your gut, your psychic abilities is asking you, what do you want to know? What do you want to know? Let me help you. Right. Yeah, so intuition and psychic ability, to me, it's almost the same thing. Now, I know, John, you specialize in uh, dealing with people that are, are, are grieving, especially sure. with the loss of a loved one. And, yes. and in the ghost community, we deal with that, too. We deal with people yes. that um, you know, are sometimes trying to do EVP work, electronic voice phenomena, trying to reach out and, and get that communication. And one thing in my gut that always, you know, ugh, is it too soon? Is it too soon? To, what, when is too soon to try to reach out to a loved one that's just passed? I think uh, I always say, Jeff, wait three months. OK, okay. it gives it gives the person who just passed away a chance to be back home to get used to. You know, it's like going into a new house, even though you came from that place. And a lot of people may want to come see me, Jeff, right away. And I say, don't. You're going through such an amazing grief. You know, you got the five stages of grief, you know, yeah. shock, denial, anger. OK, you have to go through your bereavement. I had a woman come see me once. Um, she lost her son. I think it was like a month. Now, granted, people have to wait a lot longer because I really don't do privates anymore. But she was just sitting there. She was a mess. Here I am bringing her son through. or he, Actually, they come to me. I don't call them. Um, and she wasn't ready to hear the information. She was just sit there. She was heavily medicated. So I say don't run to a medium right away. Give it a few months so you can actually deal with the fact that you've lost that person before you even want to talk to them again. And, and I know, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, dealing with, with death is death is a sticky wicket. I mean, it just is. It, it's, sure. it's the elephant in the room when you're talking about hauntings, when you're talking about psychic stuff. It makes us all uncomfortable because we're all going to die. You know, tough break. We're right. all going to go through. Nobody that. wants to talk about it, though. Uh, right? Yeah. No one except. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Weird people like us, you know, who <laughs> do it from a spaceship. But that's uh, that's beside the point. Now, in your book, this was interesting to me. Uh, you you talked about uh, someone a, a, a 9/11 victim coming through. And, yes. Um, can you can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. It was um, it was in Boston, and it was the end of the night. Now, remember, it takes a lot of energy to do this work. I I was done, but I had this gentleman come to me in my ear, and say, 
go to the back, please go to the back. And I just said, and, and now remember, I don't have to do it because they're saying, I could be like, you know what, pal, you know what, it's cocktail time, I'm done. You know, I don't have to do it. But, you know, it was the end of the night, I could feel it. He said, go to the back of the room. And as he was saying that, I felt a sense of falling, falling, falling. And I said, is this a plane? Am I falling off a cliff? And I'm saying this in my mind. He said, go to the back of the room and mention the rock. So I went to the back of the room. Remember, that's the John Hancock call. I don't know, five, six, seven, eight hundred people. And I said, I'm coming to the back of the room. I have a gentleman. He's talking about going down, going down. I don't know if this is a plane or I'm falling. And I said, and he's telling me, go to the last row and the woman in the back. And a woman raises her hand. And I said, all right, before you give me the information, do you understand losing a male figure by some type of falling or a plane? And she said, yes. And I said, well, then what's with the rock? Because he keeps saying, mention the rock. And that's when she gasped. And she said that she lost her husband in 9-11 um, at the, on the Pennsylvania where the terror, where the um, passengers took over the yeah. terrorist. Sure. Um, he talked about how he tried to call her on the phone. And I said, I, understand. I said, okay. And, and, you know, and the audience is all, oh, you know, and she starts to cry. And, um, and I, I said, well, what's with the rock? And she said, every year, they would take a bottle of champagne, go to the beach, sit on their favorite rock, and toast each other at sunset. So she would still do that even after he passed. It had to be like three or four years now. Right. And I said, he's telling me that you've met someone. And she said, oh, my God, I have. I said, he wants you to go on. He wants you to be happy. I said, didn't this guy ask you to be engaged? And she said, absolutely. She said, but I felt like I was cheating. I felt guilty. I said, he wants you to go on. So she starts crying. I start crying because it was so touching. Tissues are being flown at this woman, you know, for everyone in the audience. And she said that that's what she needed to hear because she did want to marry this guy. And But she got she needed to hear um, the, from, from her husband uh, who passed away permission. Beautiful story. And she did marry the guy. Now, what's so interesting to me is when you talk about 9-11, now that's obviously personal. That's her husband. I mean, the rest of America, it's a wound. It's a wound for all of yes. us, right? We, we all mourn yes. that one. But, but, you know, she obviously has more right than any of us. She lost someone literally in, in the event. Um, yes. do, do you find a backlash when you even imply uh, something related to something that's become a, a, a sacred cow in this country, 9-11? Um, and, you know, for example, no. I'm, I'm jumping around, I'm sorry, but uh, I, okay. I know some people that said, oh, I want to go investigate the, uh, you know, the World Trade Center site. And I said, oh, right. my gosh, you can't do that. It's, I mean, I want it. It, it just, it, you'd be lynched, you know. I mean, do you find backlash when you even talk about this kind of stuff? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Because it's a wound and because the work that I do helps people, their hearts are open to it. I've never gotten a backlash about it. And people say, well, why don't you go to 9-11, um, the ground? I don't want to go there. I'm yeah. very sensitive. I'm very. I'm one big psychic antenna. Why would I want to go there? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, on such you know, on such mass, I wouldn't mind going into a house that you know that has some haunting and in, 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 um, th that has a haunting or something, but not such a place with a tragedy. You know, I, I'd probably be overwhelmed with the sadness. Yeah, understood. I mean, geez, just the memorial alone is overwhelming for the, for all of us. But sure. Uh, so okay, we have a question for you from Matt. Matt, do tell. Well, I'm going to try and condense a little bit from from the uh, chat room. Uh, everybody wants to know about their spirit guides. What can you tell us about spirit guides? You know, a lot of people uh, ask me, you know, they'll say to me, who's my spirit guide? And I'm, yeah. you know what? Why have me tell you? What am I going to say? Oh, it's Mohammed. It's it's Robert. It's it's. I don't pick that up unless a student is sitting with me. I may feel the influence of an American Indian, and I believe we all have spirit guides. I've got like three of them. Um, as a kid, I always used to dream, Jeff, of um, bald-headed um, Asian men in gold robes. And I, I'm like, why would I dream this? And I've always, and then... We've all been there. I, I'm sorry? We've all been there. Yeah. So, uh, you know, bald-headed men in, in, in gold robes. And then I go to England, and they start, to, and these mediums start telling me about a Tibetan monk that's with me. And one medium, Coral Polja, passed away. Even before I said anything, she drew my guide. But we all have guides. But too many people, Jeff, and everyone... They're here to help us and guide you. They're not here to run your life. I mean, you can't ask them, should I buy this lettuce? Should I do this? You know what I mean? They're here for your spiritual development to guide you, to inspire you. But too many people put too much emphasis on guides. They don't want you to run your life. They're just here to help your life. But I believe I believe we all have them. Yeah. You know, this this afternoon we posted on Facebook and Twitter. And I, I do this every week. I said, hey, anyone have questions for John Holland? You know, psychic questions, stuff like that. Uh, there, there were a bunch of smart asses who said, "What are the next lottery numbers?" And and uh, of course. and then uh, this one That's actually, fine. this one 
I do want to read this. This was funny. I Go am Ghostbait on Twitter said, where the hell are my keys? That's a, that's a good one. Um, and, and so those came up. But then, uh, you know, there were others that, that were, a lot of people wanted to know about their love life, about their career. And, and I understand sure. you're not going to be able to give a reading to someone this far removed. They have to be there. Right. That's fine. But, but then some were, were incredibly specific. Abby C. said she wanted to know if something catastrophic was going to happen in Northern California between March 20th and March 22nd. That is the most specific uh, psychic question I, I think I've heard. So do you pick up on things like that, like big general areas, or is it about S people? Sometimes I do. Sometimes. Um, you know, I've got some people that specialize in that. Um, unfortunately, bad news travels quick, yeah. okay, uh, in the ethers. It really, really does. But I think um, some of us, um, a lot of people, too, I think they felt something um, like 9-11. I think they knew something was going to happen. And sometimes I'll know if something good is going to happen, uh, you know, for me, but I can also feel when something is going to happen in the earth somewhere. There's like an energy thing. I may not know where it is, but I know within a couple of days that there's going to be an earthquake um, or a, a tornado or something. Yeah. Okay. So it can happen. And, and now this one was good because this is the same question I've had. Julie Monroe wanted to know, uh, so how do spirits communicate with you? What, what are you seeing, smelling, hearing, feeling when, when a spirit right. comes to you with a message for someone? What is that experience like for you? Great question. And it doesn't happen 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, I've trained myself to shut it down. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a life. Okay. You know, I'm a human and uh, I'm also a medium. I'm just a man. I'm just a guy. Right. Um, but when I open up, my aura expands, and, and I don't have to do chanting or light an incense, or it just happens. Um, I'll get on stage, and I will feel if it's a male or figure or a father figure. I'll feel a father's love, um, and I'll come to a certain person or a certain section of the audience and say, do you understand losing the father figure, please? Or I'll go right to somebody in the audience and say, when did your dad pass away? And I will start getting um, information like, uh, this is just a, an example, um, I could get how they passed or their age or a name, or they they're clever and they may say they may give me something and i say to someone in the audience you just had your, your molars pulled last thursday and they'd be like oh my god and i said and people are like well why do people spirits do that i'm like if i got an audience like i just did two thousand people in australia you gotta be specific you can't say is there a john who had cancer you know what i mean right. so there's many ways i will hear see and feel the information and i've opened myself up um, while I'm on stage, I may take on the mannerisms of a stroke victim. They're not jumping into my body like Whoopi Goldberg in the movie, but they'll get close <laughs> enough to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I, I'll start my, my face will start to drop. Yeah. So I will hear, see, and feel the information. And I've learned, Jeff, too. Just get out of the way, John. Less of you, more spirit. Just give what you're getting, and it's usually a good. It's usually going to be a clear message. Okay. Uh, you know, we only have a couple minutes left, but real quick, th th this subject, especially you know, not just psychic, but ghosts, hauntings, all that stuff. Sure. It's everywhere. It's all over the television. Uh, there's all these ghost hunting shows. Is, is that making your work more difficult? Are people expecting you to, to have the gear and the gadgets and to work with those guys and to come in and... and no, like, not really, ghosts? Jeff. I, I appreciate... I mean, ghosts are still big. Everyone's... You know, you see all these ghost hunting shows. Yeah. And I want to know. I'd like to go there. Are they really haunted? You know what I mean? I think hauntings can be rare, too. I don't think it's a... I don't know, Jeff. How do you feel? Is, do you think hauntings are rare or it's everywhere? Uh, I think my definition of a haunting is this simple. It's, it's a reputation that gets around, but I don't think the reputation gets around without a catalyst. And to me, that catalyst has to be something paranormal. Some reliable right. witness has to experience something they can't explain. They tell others it seems believable. The reputation grows haunted. Active Absolutely. haunting, so not haunting, that's, you know. And sometimes, too, everyone, sometimes it's not a haunting. Like, I, I, they took me to the shirtwaist factory where 90 people, women jumped from, to their deaths in 1911. Right. Now, it's not haunted, but the energy of that tragic event is in, like in the ethers. So it's an energy replay, not a haunting. Right, like a, like a residual kind of thing. Understood. Absolutely. But John, we have actually run right up to the end of the show, and I know we could keep talking. And, and, That's it. Uh, and That's it. I know, I know. It's called 30 odd minutes. You know, who has time for, for much more? But, uh, but very you awesome. Didn't see uh, it coming? The name of the book is Spirit Whisperer Chronicles of a Medium by John Holland. We'll have links to it from our website, links to John. You can find out he's got amazing events coming up. I know you're doing something with uh, uh, Dr. Brian Weiss. Uh, in Boston, Boston yeah. we'll have links to that as well, and uh, and just a really interesting conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Until Thanks, next guys. time, folks. Thanks, Thanks guys. Guys.